afternoon, everybody. Today, with the cooperation of the Department for the Aging and Cyber Seniors, we are bringing understanding smart home technology, also known as home automation. The table of content that we'll be covering today is what is a smart technology, examples and most common devices, how a smart technology can help you maintain independence and age in place, as well how to choose the right devices for your home and lifestyle. We will be ending with a brief live demonstration. To start with, what is a smart home technology? It is the general term for basic home amenities provided with communication technology, enabling automation and or remote control. We cannot talk about a smart home technology without mentioning the Internet of Things. Home devices are essential component of the Internet of Things when connected to a network. The IoT is described as physical elements or groups of objects set with sensors, processing ability, software, and other technologies that connect and exchange data with other devices and systems over the internet or any other communications. A home automation system typically connects control devices to something is called a central home hub, oftentimes known or called a gateway. If you wonder after seeing the previous slide, what is a smart home hub? A hub serves as the nerve center of home automation systems and ties all devices together. Most smart home devices, regardless of the protocol they use to operate, are controllable with their application. And if they need a bridge or hub, they will typically come with one. However, the benefit of a separate one or multi-purpose one is that users can control everything in that single application. Types of smart home technologies. We will elaborate further on Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, but so that you have an idea, smart home technologies can be operated essentially from your smart device, say your tablet, your phone, and also there is another method such as voice activation to give that device or appliance orders. But let's jump into Wi-Fi. As you know, Wi-Fi is everywhere. And smart Wi-Fi devices are usually easy to install. However, they carry more power and are known to drain batteries quickly. In addition, installing too many Wi-Fi devices can affect network performance, but yet many security cameras and doorbells use Wi-Fi to operate. Any hub worth installing will include a Wi-Fi radio to connect to the home network and control smart devices from basically anywhere. Bluetooth wireless technology is also favored in locally controlled devices using a mobile application, such as door locks and lighting systems. It is more energy efficient in comparison to Wi-Fi, but its limited range implies that you can control these devices remotely or out of Bluetooth range without the use of a hub. What features can be a part of a smart home? Home entertainment systems and also security systems, appliances like washing machines, 
fridges and garage door openers, as well as environmental controls such as air conditioning, heating, and lighting. Let's take a look at the examples and most common devices in a smart home technology. A smart lighting. Lighting is the entry point for most people interested in living in a smart home. Cree, Lifts, and TP-Link communicate over Wi-Fi, while others, including the Philips Hue bulbs, communicate via the Bluetooth radio in mobile devices, such as your smartphone, tablet, iPad. Ceiling lighting. If most of a home's lighting is in the ceiling and controlled by a switch on the wall, switches could be replaced with smart controllers and dimmers. For example, Leviton, Lutron, and TP-Link, and EcoV make intelligent light switches that operate on a Wi-Fi network. Lamps. If you use lamps for most of your lighting, a smart plug such as the Lutron Cassetta or Wemo Mini will enable you to turn the lamp on and off. And of course, dim is dumb light bulb. When we talk about dumb light, it's the regular lighting that you could be using at this time. And this can be done with the use of a smartphone application and according to a specific schedule. Smart speakers. Imagine having the convenience of picking up your mobile device to dim the lights on movie night, for example. Simply saying dim the lights and having a smart speaker linked to a smart lighting to do it sounds like ideal. The Amazon Echo and Google Home series are the market leaders in this space of a smart home technology. Next, home security cameras. A quality home security camera will allow you to keep a vigilant eye on your home, particularly while you are away. Indoor models can aid you in monitoring your pets, for instance. Outdoor models can catch housebreakers in the act and hopefully discourage them from coming around in the first place. Some models from Ring, Erlo, Netamo, and Maximus incorporate lights that can illuminate your way. In addition, cameras incorporated into doorbells can monitor your front porch and let you interact with visitors without needing to approach the door or even be at home at the time. Thermostat. Few smart home devices can match a smart thermostat ability to deliver comfort and cost energy savings. These devices go beyond establishing a heating and cooling schedule based on when you anticipate being home to enjoy this type of benefits. Instead, they can detect when you're home or away so the HBAC system operates only when needed. The Nest or EcoV line of thermostat allow you to adjust your AC or heating based on the time of the day or when you arrive home. The EcoV also even has multiple sensors you can place around your house to see the temperature in more than one room. Locks and doorbells. A smart locks functionalities may vary. Some allow you to lock your doors from your phone. Some can give a friend or a family member temporary access. 
In addition, unique options such as the weak set kibo let you unlock your door by merely touching it with your finger. Smart doorbells have cameras to see who is at the door and ignore troublesome solicitors. Doorbells from Ring and Nest can also integrate cameras from their parent companies, so you can create a whole system that detects nearby motion, sends you alerts when you are in home, and also saves recordings in the cloud for a later access. How a smart technology can help you maintain independence and age in place. Nearly 75% of adults ages 50 and older wish to remain in their homes for as long as possible as they age. According to the AARP 2021 Home and Community Preferences Survey. Smart home devices, appliances, and technologies can help older adults achieve that by connecting to their living spaces via the internet. Anything from a smart door locks, cameras, and lighting to a smart hubs controlling all your smart devices. A smart home upgrades can help you age safely even with mobility challenges and other health issues. Smart hubs and why to consider them. Smart hubs let you operate multiple smart devices through a command center, such as Amazon Echo, Google Nest, or even Samsung SmartThings. Smart hubs maintain a connection via Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. They may use voice activation through Amazon Alexa or any other voice assistant system. Many have a display with a touch screen and or application on your smartphone. A smart speakers hub. In their way, they also serve as a central interaction point for everything from smart lights to home security cameras, and of course, displaying video from the last content on TV or even multimedia functionalities if the system is equipped with this function. Apple Devices Hub. The company has risen as a contender in this area of a smart technology thanks to his home kit ecosystem. The HomePod mini smart speaker powered by Siri can act as a smart home hub. Apple raises its commitment to privacy in this intelligent home pitch when presented to users. Technology offers plenty of products that can help you ensure safety at home. New monitoring designed to serve other adults are in development as we conduct this presentation. And others are already available, including wearable battery operated emergency alert systems such as Philips Lifeline that detects falls and summon help. The Apple Watch, the Series 4, monitors heart rhythm and detects falls. Some cell phones such as Rayco offer emergency response buttons. Voice control devices such as LivePod, which work with smart speakers to remind the user when to take their medication or head to a medical appointment. And cameras, microphone, and motion sensors monitor regular activity or signal a lack of two caregivers, for example. Of course, ask yourself, what features do you need? There are many different smart home design devices on the market, and it can be hard to decide which one is right for you. Before you buy a device, make sure you have a good idea of what you need it for. For instance, you could need a device to control your lights, locks, and thermostat. Alternatively, you may 
only need a device to open and close your door. What type of device is best for you? Do you want a voice activate device or one that you can control with your hands? Are you looking for a device that you can use to monitor your home from afar or one you can control your lights and appliances? Once you have answered questions like this, it might be time to consider your budget and what devices are available to you. How to choose the right devices for your home and lifestyle. Some of the first steps you can take regarding this matter are here. Ensuring that choosing a smart home products are compatible with each other. Identify which smart home products don't depend on a smart home hub to operate if you intend to start a small with home automation. It would be best count with a reliable wireless router, one which signal can be extended all over the home. While it is true that building out a smart home requires lots of components, sensors, smart bulbs, security cameras, speakers, and connecting them to a hub that helps them communicate with each other and with a user via their electronic devices. If your wishes and necessities are less complex, just a few products will deliver some of the benefits of a high-end smart home on a reasonable budget. Which devices are the most affordable? The more affordable devices available on the market include voice-activated smart lights, smart locks, and a smart thermostat. These devices are perfect for people who want to make their homes more energy efficient and comfortable. Other devices such as smart cameras and home security systems are more expensive but offer features that are worth the investment. Choosing the right smart home device is more than personal preferences. The type of appliances, Different appliances have different safety requirements. For example, homes that use fuel burning appliances or have fireplaces or attached garage could benefit from CO detectors, living arrangements. If you rent, you might not be able to connect wire appliances like doorbell cameras to the place wiring system. The size of the home, a larger home could need additional devices like extra security cameras to monitor all the areas. Finally, smart home privacy considerations and potential drawbacks. Smart devices and appliances are connected to the internet, smartphones and tablets, which can risk data and privacy. Unless the necessary steps are taken to prevent issues, the Federal Trade Commission, FTC, recommends the following privacy and data protection measures. Changing the default username password and network name that comes with your internet router and each device. Enabling encryption in your router's wireless security settings. Checking for running the router and device hardware and software updates. Setting up two-factor authentication, such as a code sent to your phone, thumbprint scan, or other identification necessary to operate the device. Adjusting a smart device privacy settings and removing applications you don't use that may collect data on your usage and behavior. All right, we are going to use two applications that are related to a smart home technology. For instance, I will start with Home, and Home is a Google Assistant. This Google Assistant allows you to do different things on your devices. So for instance, if you have any device connected in this platform, it will allow you to control it from here. In my particular case, I have something is called a Chromecast, 
and this Chromecast allow me to mirror my different devices to the screen of my TV. And essentially, I can control when I play music, when I play movies from my smartphone device. So at the moment, I have something is called a room. It's a family room where my TV is, but there are much more things you can do with this home application from Google. You have something is called routines, and routines automatically allow users to do multiple things at once. You can set up routines for your bedtime, commuting home, commuting to work, or any other type of things that you do. If you want the application or system to walk you through different steps in your morning, you have a routine for morning time. And this can be set up in the way you want, really. So for instance, if I use this one that says good morning, it's gonna take me to a series of steps based on what the day looks on my end. So I'm gonna play this one that says good morning so you can hear what it does. Hi, Annie. It's 9.53 a.m. It's three and partly cloudy. Today, it'll be mostly sunny with a high of 11 and a low of three. Have a wonderful day. Here's the latest news. From CBC News at 9.31 a.m. today. From CBC News, it's the world this hour. Essentially, that's certain things based on that routine I set up. And if you ever want to go back to the main menu after you play a routine, for example, in one of these home systems you can always use from your smart device or your smartphone the back button and it will take you back to all the routines so you have a series of routines that you can set up from this point and i use the back button once more and also you have a portion for settings if you ever want to modify any type of information and how the application and system use data and details, you can come to this part. So for instance, if I go to home information, it will tell me things such as the home nickname and the address associated with that. Now you can decide if you want the application to dismiss your address. Essentially what it does is allow you to find much more accurate answers about whether traffic, and anything that could be relevant for you and your routines. If I go back and I tap in the back button, instead of home information, I can go also to my rooms and groups. In my rooms and groups, I can see the devices that have been set up and I can control from my smartphone. So here, as I went over before, I have my family room and it will tell me the name, the device settings, and also the type of appliance that I have. This is a TV, and you can either delete a room from this point or choose any other devices that can be synced with this TV. I'm going back. When I go back to the menu, I can go again to privacy. And in privacy, you can decide what information can be managed by the Google Assistant. So from this point, you can review and adjust your data usage, settings, privacy, and control other things. You can decide if you want to remove any safe Wi-Fi information, and data in this application would be anything from home activity, what has happened with that device in your home, the data that the Google Assistant uses to give you results when you need something, and any other relevant thing related with the use of Google devices. As you see, you will see much more information here on different features that Google manage in terms of smart home technology. Now, if I want to go back 
And if you ever want to use an assistant, you have in your smartphone when you are in the application, a microphone. If you tap over that microphone, you will be allowed to ask the assistant a question. And that is how a smart speaker works. So when I do that, it activates the assistant with a command. The command for this assistant is, hey, Google. When I tap over that, it's going to prompt me to ask what it is that I need. Of course, now, since I'm talking, the action is not as clear for the assistant, but I'm going to do that one more time. Hey, Google, can you turn on my TV? There you are. Once you do that, here is showing the remote control from my smartphone as opposed to me having a remote control on my hand or having to find one. So if I want to turn it on or off, I can use this particular option. Hey, Google, turn off my TV. That is a small portion of what this assistant can do, but I just want you to have an idea, okay? So the microphone is right here. You have the home. The home icon will show you the devices set up within the application or through the application. We went over routines, right? And we went over settings and you have media. So media is the different entertainment platforms that you can connect. So here you can manage your system and the system could include music, right? And it will display all the different platforms that you can connect home with music. Or perhaps you want to connect video. In that case, it will show you the streaming platform, whether it's Netflix, Disney+, Plus, YouTube Kids, and so forth. So whenever you tap in one of these categories, it will display the application you can use to work with the smart home device. Radio. So each of these categories have different applications that can be linked to the device. So that is a little bit about my home application from Google. Now, I also have Amazon Alexa. So my Amazon Alexa allow me to do similar things such as I did in the home from Google application. And here at the moment is recognizing my voice because it's a system that work through voice activation. In this application of Alexa that works with a device, Echo Dot is the one I have. There you are. So it was giving me information about the kind of device that I have. And essentially, this device that I have is activated with voice. So in my Alexa app, I can do multiple things. I can go to my home, which is the activity that has happened with my device, right? I can listen to music or I can read books in applications connected through the platform, whether it's Kindle or any other system that can be matched with Alexa. You have communications and in communications, if you use an Alexa, you probably will be able to call or message people in your contact list through the application, which is kind of nice. You have play and the play menu is anything related with multimedia. In this case is a list 
of the tracks or music that I have played within my eco.alexa. Devices are the devices connected in the application. So here I have the device connected, right? It's a type of echo. And here is the name of my device. So it's Annie's EI. And essentially when I select in that, it will give me information such as the Wi-Fi network or whether the Bluetooth is on, or if I want to connect other type of devices, or if I have any type of alarms and timers set up. So that is a little bit about devices. And lastly, within this row of menus, I have more and in more, I have way much more things that I can do. I can do lists and notes, reminders, calendars, alarms and timers, set up routines such as we did in home, play games, try new things with Alexa, find devices, uh, set up workouts, and even having a cooking library information if I ever want to do that. Similar to what we saw in home, you can go to your settings to change other things, such as your profile, the account, the devices, and multiple other things. So say that I'm going to give my voice activate speaker an order. So I will just use this icon right here, which is the icon for my Amazon Alexa. What time is it? It's 10 or 5 a.m. Alexa, what is today's day? Alexa, what is the weather? Clouds with the high of 11 degrees and a low of 2 degrees. Alexa, can you set a reminder? What's the reminder for? Taking my medicine. When should I remind you? 2 p.m. Okay, I'll remind you at 2 p.m. By the way, when your reminder rings, you can use it by saying, Remind me again in 15 minutes. And that is just a brief idea of how this smart home technology can assist you in so many things in your own living arrangement. Thank you for listening. If you have any question or would like to learn this lesson with a Cyber Seniors Mentor, please visit us at cyberseniors.org or call the 844-217-3057 to register for a one-on-one -on -one phone session 